Hello everybody. Um, today I'm going to review the Toma Model Works Porter 040 in HON3. Uh, Toma is a Japanese company and um, I'd say that this model is a fascinating proof of concept because everything except the etched metal, um, the electronics and motor and stuff like that um, is all 3D printed in UV resin. Um, as I was assembling this model I received a lot of comments and questions on social media um, specifically because of this material and I've seen quite a bit of concern on forums and email lists from model railroaders um, who aren't quite familiar with 3D printing and wondering how it holds up to uh, injection molded plastic. I am impressed with this Toma model. The detail of the resin is smooth and sharp. Um, the resin is strong. I did accidentally break the headlight off of the smoke box front when I dropped a screwdriver on it but I've actually dropped the entire model a couple of times and it's held up really well with no other damage. Um, so it compares very well to injection molded plastic. Uh, the prototype of the model is an 8 ton industrial switcher that was exported to Japan. Um, but because almost all of Porter's products were a catalog listing, um, they had standard catalog designs that you could order. Um, it matches hundreds of locomotives that were used in logging camps and in mines and small industries and narrow gauge railroads all over the world. So it does have a broad range of appeal. Um, now this model is available in both HO and 3, which is what I purchased, um, which is HO scale 3 foot gauge. And it's also available in HO and 30, representing 30 inch or 2.5 foot gauge in HO scale, um, which that one runs on N gauge track. Um, and then there are two variations. Uh, the first is a 19th century style with fluted domes, um, which is what I have, which is what we'll be seeing today. Uh, and then an early 20th century style with round domes. It's only available in DC or direct current control, um, but I'll talk a little bit about, more about that later. Um, and it costs 19,000 yen, uh, which translates to approximately $130. Um, it's not cheap, but the quality of assembly and the drive definitely makes up for that. Um, and as I understand it, Toma is a one-man operation, so all the drives are hand-assembled, which saves a lot of time and pain for us as the customer. Um, the drives come hand-assembled, and we basically only have to assemble the body that goes over it. Um, they are only available in small batches. Um, this one is currently sold out. Um, but they are good about doing reruns, so there's, I think this is the, um, they're currently on their third production, and hopefully we'll see them for sale again. And Toma also offers the drives separately in both HON3 and HON30, so if you have another shell, like something from Shapeways or another 3D printing service or something you designed yourself, you can buy these super slow drives and use your, use your own shell on it. So first off, diving in, this is what the box looks like when it comes from Japan. Um, it's a pretty small package, and inside there is a surprisingly small number of parts. There's the pre-assembled drive, the body shell, the smoke box front, and the headlight is, is printed integrally to the, uh, to the smoke box. Um, there's the cylinder saddle, the back head with all of the details, the throttle and the gauges and everything. And then a sprue of small detail parts like the, uh, like the whistle and a few screws. What's not included are the couplers, decals, and the builder's plates, although the builder's plates are available uh, separately from Toma, and those are stunningly beautiful. I recommend what, if you order a kit, make sure to also order the etched brass number plates because it really improves the appearance of the model. Now, the assembly is ridiculously easy. Uh, the large parts simply screw together, Smaller parts are just glued with a little bit of cyanoacrylate or super glue. Um, if you don't count the painting process, the whole thing goes together and will be running on your layout in less than 10 minutes. Um, I did paint mine black, very simple black, and I designed the decals myself on Adobe Illustrator um, to represent a small construction contractor's locomotive. Um, the, uh, the road name is Crandall Brothers Construction, which was a real company that existed in the 19th century. Uh, now let's see how it runs. We'll put it here on my boily tunnel diorama um, to test that. For these videos I'm using an MRC Rail Power 1500 uh, for, as a throttle, but I also test it with an Athern Power Pack and 
got similar results. Uh, I lubricated the gears first with two small drops of LaBelle oil, one on each of the visible gears on the underframe. Unfortunately, my diorama is only about two feet long, so I didn't have the space to break the model in properly. So what you're seeing is the model's first operation without break-in or warm-up or anything like that. Now, Toma advertises their drives to operate at a minimum of 50 millimeters or 2 inches per second at 6 volts, which I found to be accurate. It runs smooth, although the gears are pretty loud. I suspect that may be because the motor gears are inside the back head, and the back head probably acts as a sound box to reflect and exaggerate the noise of the gears. Um, possibly through break-in and additional lubrication, that noise can be reduced. But there is a little bit of noise, a little bit more noise than you would expect from an engine of this size. Now I did say, or talk a little bit about digital command control. There is not a lot of space in this model for a decoder, although it is possible. A friend of mine actually fit a decoder on one side of the back head and then a speaker on the other side of the back head between the boiler and the cab walls. Um, but that came at the expense of the back head detail that he had to cut out to fit these in. Um, because the back of the cab is open and I don't have very many narrow gauge models, I don't foresee really needing this to be DCC. So I just left mine as a standard DC. Um, particularly because I just really like how the printed back head looks. All the, all the gauges and piping and everything, it just looks amazing. Um, so I'm keeping mine as DC, but do consider that it is possible to install digital command control. Now one of the most common questions I've heard is how much will it pull? <laughs> this model is really small, like extremely small. Um, unfortunately, like I mentioned, I am limited in the amount of space to be able to test this model right now. Um, so I could only fit two cars on the diorama and run a train at a reasonable distance. Um, but it handles it no problem. There's no extra power draw or no... Uh, it, it didn't really add any drag to the motor itself. Um, my friend that installed DCC was able to handle five um, Blackstone-style freight cars, so like more modern Denver and Rio Grande Western drop bottom gondolas on the level and that's more than plenty in my opinion for the kind of industrial work that these locomotives uh, would have performed in real life they weren't pulling long trains they were just shuttling cars back and forth basically i am thoroughly impressed with this locomotive and as soon as they become available again in the next production i will be ordering multiples more because they're very neat locomotives and and they have such a broad range of appeal i can paint them in practically anything um, a lot of narrow gauge railroads had these porters, so it's definitely something that's worth ordering multiple, even with the, uh, even at the price point. Um, I recommend checking out Toma's website. It's Toma, T-O-M-A, M-W-2 dot com. They have a good selection of locomotives in N scale, H-O-N-3, H-O-N-30, and O-N-18, which is O scale on N, N gauge track. Um, that just fascinating models, and they all look amazing. And if uh, this porter is anything to judge by, they probably all run amazing too. So I recommend checking out Toma and buying their products. This has definitely been a good first impression for this company.